Hey everybody, it is Rose Griffin here from ABA Speech. Hope you are all having a wonderful Thursday. I just wanted to pop on here today to talk about Halloween therapy ideas. I know that the holidays are such a fun time to work on language and expressive language, receptive language, and I wanted to let you know a little bit about what's going on inside my therapy room this Halloween so that if you're looking for ideas in the next couple of weeks, two weeks probably, um, to do Halloween ideas and activities that you could use some of the things I'm going to talk about. So if you're new here, my name is Rosemary Griffin. I am a speech language pathologist and a board certified behavior analyst. I am also a blogger. I just started a blog, yay, if you've read it, thank you. If you haven't, it is new. I have two blogs out so far. And if you wanna check that out, it's www.abaspeech.blogspot.com. And I will put all these different things that I talk about today in the comments below. So hope you can check that out. And if there's other people who would be interested in reading about effective instruction for students with autism, let them know, let them know about me. So today, what I wanted to share is also a couple just little housekeeping things. I have a lot of new products on my TPT store. So what I'm gonna show you today is an adapted book that I use. One of the items is from my TPT store and then one of the items is something I actually use with my own kids at home and is Halloween inspired. So my TPT store is ABA Speech, but if you haven't been there in a while, I urge you to go on over there and look. I have a lot of, I have a fall book, I have a Halloween book, I've added some professional development webinars, I've added professional development services, so if you are meeting with a group of people and you need a speaker to talk about whatever would be great for your group, that's something that I could arrange and provide some virtual professional development, which I have been doing a bit more of lately. So go on over there to TPT and check that out. So the book that I'm gonna show you tonight is an adapted book. So you could print this out and you could use it as a book, okay? Now you don't have to print it out. It can be no print. I usually don't print it out. So tonight the way that I'm gonna show you this book is by not printing out. I'm gonna show it to you on my computer. So when I'm doing therapy, sometimes when I'm, where I'm at, I don't wanna print it out. Maybe I don't have access to a color printer. Um, and so I wanna show the students if it's a small group, I show it to them right on my laptop. Other times when I'm working in a larger school, I can pull up this material and show it through a smart board, which is always a really nice activity because it can be more interactive. Students can come up to the smart board and all those wonderful things that we know about the smart board. But you could print this out, you could bind it like a book. If you don't like to print, if you don't have access to a color copier, that's fine. That's how I show my things. It's typically on my own laptop or my district issued laptop. So if you're just joining us, I'm going over what Halloween therapy has looked like in my room and what it's gonna look like the next couple weeks. If you do need a professional who is a speech language pathologist, feel free to go to ASHA's website, www.asha.org. And if you are in need of behavioral interventions, go to the BACB.com website and you can find people in your area. I am popping on here live Every week this school year, it's my initiative to give little nuggets of information from my therapy room to yours that may help you provide systematic language instruction with ease because I know that there's so many barriers to providing uh, systematic language instruction, even if you work in private practice or a public school. So today what I wanted to share, the first thing I wanted to share is the adapted Halloween book. So if you are just tuning in, I like to show my books just on my laptop or sometimes on a smart board. So this is a book that I made. It's just $2 in my TPT store. It's called Let's Talk Halloween. And so with this book, there are different carrier phrases. And so, you know, we went to the pumpkin patch and we got a pumpkin. There's fill in the blanks in this book. So if you're working with students who are working on intraverbals, which you were with me a couple weeks ago, we talked about the, t the different verbal operands. And so intraverbals are one of those things that we're working on with earlier learners. And so this has worked out really nicely. The students that I've shown this book to, I've shown it to younger students, I've shown it to older students, and I like to use real life pictures when I create all of my materials so that they are age appropriate. I think oftentimes in the speech therapy world, we are dealing with uh, materials that are cartoons and things that the kids are just not engaged with. So I think that real life pictures are the way to go. So these are all stock photos and in this book for you. 
So it looks at, you know, we drew in eyes, we drew eyes and nose, and uh, the student can say mouth. And the book goes on like this, and so the student can fill in the blanks with different Halloween words, so if you're working on Halloween vocabulary, this works out perfect. We saw ghosts, and the ghost said, kids love that one. Um, we saw a cat, and the cat said, meow. So these are all the different pictures. Now when you get to the end of the story, if you take turns, you can have the students using different intraverbals, if they're able to fill in the blanks and things like that. Then there are some fill in the blank phrases, and then it ends with some social language questions. So if you have students who are at a higher level, there are social language questions. You could print these out, or you could just ask them, take turns asking them, and having them ask other peers back. Do you like Halloween? What's your favorite candy? Do you like to carve pumpkins? And then they can work on that back and forth social reciprocity, which is also an interverbal and the basis and the building blocks of conversation. So whatever um, stage your learner is at, this is a nice activity. So if you have a student who is labeling, they can help fill in the blanks. If you have a student who is asking and answering social questions, there's a component to that too. So it's called Let's Talk Halloween and it's on my TPT store. Other things that I've been doing in addition to that are using my awesome, if you're just tuning in, we're talking about Halloween therapy ideas, using my little pumpkin, which I stole from my own kids. And so what I did next in some of the groups that I've been doing is I would put things in the pumpkin. So inside the pumpkin, for some of the students, I put in different labeling targets. So a great idea to work on generalizations is to have the students work on skills outside of that teaching table time. So if you're working with a group, that's a way to generalize to new setting, new people, if you have different materials. Oftentimes, learners with autism and other complex communication disorders have trouble with generalization. So this would be a way to work on that. And so what I did, I had an old coloring book, um, and so I just, this is like just super easy. I just took some of the pages out and folded them up, and then I had the students you know, shake it up, have the students pick out one, and then they could work on making a sentence. I have a witch, okay? So that's if you wanna do more Halloween vocabulary. If you wanna work on the generalization of language skills, maybe you have students who are working on different labeling targets, you could put them in the pumpkin, pass the pumpkin around, have them pick a card that would be something they could be working on, and then have them say a sentence or an action or whatever correlates with what other language uh, goals are. Okay, so the idea was you could do something that would be cute like putting Halloween type vocabulary in the pumpkin and having each student pick out one and make a sentence or label it, whatever language level the student is at. If you want to work on generalization and you wanna work on the kid's actual targets, you could take their picture cards, put them in the pumpkin and have them take turns, okay? It's all gonna be good because it's working on cooperative activities, it's working on waiting, it's working on passing. I mean, it's working on picking something out for some students, that's hard, right? Um, and it's working on generalization, or maybe it's working on new vocabulary, which I think is fun for all kids. I don't know, I'm a speech therapist, I love the holidays, I'm not gonna lie, um, and I think that it's cool to talk about at any age. So if you're just tuning in, we are talking about some therapy ideas for the holidays. So I shared an adapted book that's in my TPT store called Let's Talk Halloween, it's only $2. And I showed it tonight on my computer because that's the way that I like to use it is on my computer or I show it on a smart board. When I'm working with my own little pumpkins at home because I have three little ones, I really love this book, Llama Llama Halloween. It's super cute, it's super short, and there's only one sentence on each page. I mean, and everybody loves Llama Llama. So if you haven't checked this out, this is a must and I will put this in the comments below. Um, something that I haven't done this year, but I have done in the past, is if I have students who are more conversational, I may have them do a little survey. So I've done this a lot in the past. So I may write on a piece of paper, what is your favorite candy? And then I put four choices, candy corn, Skittles, Snickers, Milky Way, whatever, A, B, C, D. And I say, okay, you, student A, you go ask the principal, and the secretary, or you go ask the principal and miss so-and-so, and then come back and you have to log down what their answers were. 
And then we can kind of have different kids going to ask different people, and then we can compile the answers. So if you're just tuning in, I'm just giving ideas of things I've done in the past for some of my older students. And so I love that activity because the students may have to navigate to different places in the building. The students may have to tally to understand like, okay, somebody answered skills, that correlates with B, so do I circle it? Do I put a tally by it? Then we all come back to the table, right? We're following directions, a lot of listener responding going on. We come back to the table and then we can each say, oh, like, hey, what did so-and-so say? How many do you have for Kit Kats? How many do you have for Skittles? And if you're collaborating with a teacher, which we talk about collaborative services a lot, you could turn it into a math lesson and do a bar graph and do all kinds of great things. But I love incorporating those types of things when I have learners that are on that language level, navigating to talk to different people, gaining attention, asking a question, writing something down. It all kind of mimics a work task, right? That's what I do at work. I listen to people, I have my clipboard. If you work with me, you know that I have a clipboard. I write things down with my pen and pencil. Um, I come back and I talk about it. So anyway, I always like to try to think of simulated vocational scenarios, especially when you're working with older students. So that's just a little tidbit. So if you're just tuning in, we talked about my Halloween TPT book. It's only $2, so press shop now to check it out. We also talked about picking out something cool from the pumpkin, either a fun vocabulary word or a target. Hey, action builder cards right here. Um, and then we talked about Llama Llama, one of my favorite books. So these are some fun things that I have been doing in therapy. Oh, the other thing that I wanted to share is with some of my students, um, if you've watched any of my resources at www.abaspeech.org, which is my website, which I urge you to go and visit if you haven't, every month this school year we're having a freebie, is that I do modified music, musical chairs with some of my younger students. So modified in the fact that, and give me a thumbs up if you've been to my website. So modified musical chairs in the fact that, let's say we have three students playing, we have three chairs the entire time. And so for a Halloween inspired modified musical chairs, I play the old school Monster Mash song. Or another song that might be like good that's a little newer, but it's still really old, is Ghostbusters. So that popped up on my YouTube today when I was looking up Monster Mash. So I put on the music and the directions are, okay, when Miss Rose puts on the music, we walk. And when the music's all done, we sit down. And that's, those are the only directions. And so I have played that, the particular group that I have, they're kind of over musical chairs. We've like did it a long time ago, so we're on to different things. But that is definitely something I've done in the past and something that I love to do. I mean, musical chairs is fun. I play the current song, you can play a thematic song, and the idea is they just have to listen to the direction, and then it's a cooperative leisure activity. And so if you know anything about me, you know that I think leisure is so very important for social skills and quality of life and happiness and joy and all those things that um, we as speech language pathologists and BCBAs and professionals and parents and whoever is out there listening is so, um, you know, involved in helping, right, to increase. So those are some ideas. The adapted book, the taking um, a survey of, of people's favorite candy, playing modified musical chairs with a thematic song. How fun is that? And picking something fun out of the pumpkin. So those are some things that I've been doing. If you would prefer to read about all this, I hope that you go over to my blog. I have a blog now, woohoo, which is at www.abaspeech.blogspot.com. And I will put that in the comments below. So let me know, have you read it? Is it any good? There are people reading it. I do check the analytics every once in a while. So those are my ideas for Halloween. I have them listed in that blog if you wanna check that out as well. I did wanna let you know that in November, the freebie is going to be a vocational passage. So last month, if you were an email subscriber, the freebie was manding strategies, that's right. And that seems to be, I got some positive feedback on that. The manding free, or the uh, November freebie is gonna be a vocational passage and it's gonna be about a bakery. So it'll have a real life photo. It has a vocational passage. It has different vocabulary words. And then it also has comprehension questions about the passage and it has social language questions. Would you wanna work in a bakery? Do you like to go to a bakery? What do you like to eat at a bakery? All those different things. And then if you're not working with older students, I have a book that's all about desserts. I see a cake, I eat a pie. 
different things to work on building vocabulary that kind of goes with the vocational passage. So if you know somebody that you work with that would love to have some freebies in November, make sure you send them to my website, www.abaspeech.org. Um, one other thing I wanted to tell you I'm gonna start doing is a free Zoom webinar every month. It's really just a free webinar. Zoom is a technology where you can do a webinar and I can share my screen so you can see me and the PowerPoint which is always fun, makes it a little more personal. So if you are a subscriber to my email at www.abaspeech.org by next Wednesday, no, next Tuesday, I'll put all this down too. If you are a subscriber by next Tuesday, because that's when my email will go out, um, I will send to just email subscribers, it's just gonna be for email subscribers and it'll be free a webinar about strategies for working with students with autism and complex communication disorders. So how to work with an early learner. How, what do we work on? What do we do? Gross motor imitation. We'll talk about echoics. I'm gonna talk about all that stuff. So it'll be a 30 minute webinar. And if you are a speech language pathologist and you are there for the Zoom webinar, you can email me and I will send you a certificate of completion. So if you're just joining me, I'm letting you know that next Thursday at 8.30 p.m. I'm going to do a Zoom webinar about early learner skills and students with autism. And that will just be for email subscribers. So sharing is caring. If you know anybody that is struggling to provide systematic language instruction or just wants to brush up a bit um, and just collaborate with other speech language pathologists um, who are providing these services. I think it's great to do all this because I get to collaborate with you and hear about what's going on in your therapy room and I always love that. So make sure to sign up at my website, check out my TPT store and next week, we will meet here again and we will talk about the speech language pathologist and working on vocational type activities. I want to talk about working with older students a little bit and starting to talk about that because I think that's important and I think it's an underserved population and we don't hear it about, about it all that often. So make sure that you tune in next Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. to talk about the speech language pathologist and vocational based skills. So thanks for tuning in. Have a good one.